Well, Zelda's biggest fan. Yeah, I had uh, somebody on LinkedIn who said their professor, uh, what a sin, had uh, kind of sold her short and told her she wasn't in the right business and uh, she's doing quite well. And uh, I told her that's what he gets for selling her short instead of going long, right? Uh, you probably heard that saying, don't sell somebody short. They might uh, surprise you. Uh, I don't know where my wingman Brian is. No problem. It's uh, my live stream. Uh, and, and Brian, who knows, maybe had a good hockey game or something to check out. So uh, welcome to our Tuesday live stream. Uh, we are here every Tuesday, 530 uh, Las Vegas time. Uh, we do a Tuesday live stream. We do a Thursday premiere. This Thursday's premiere will be on a, a tutoring. Sometimes when I'm doing tutoring, the person will give me permission to show their replay uh, in the tutoring replay uh, playlist. So that's what that will be. It's an hour on uh, mutual ones. It's part one. She did uh, two hours, but the uh, second hour I already got up and you can watch it uh, there. So that's what's going on. Let's get rid of our boom. Uh, let me see. Since it's just me, maybe I'll show you my extra camera. That's really not a good one. Uh, that's the one I'm using. There we go. Give you two views of the studio today. Um, back to what we need to uh, talk about, question format. So uh, when you're asking a question in the chat, you welcome to talk to your Souther, Victoria's test takers. You know, it's a community event, uh, but it helps me pick out in the um, the chat, uh, what is the question that somebody's asking? That doesn't look like that was a good camera choice. Let's get rid of that. Um, so just put SIE or series seven and the Q followed by your question. And, uh, that way I'll know, you know, what, what you're about. I don't spend a lot of time telling you what test are you taking that kind of thing. Um, as soon as I get the housekeeping done, I will get going on questions. So uh, brief and debrief, uh, you can get a debrief from debrief from Brian, myself, and Victoria's test takers. Brief means if you've got a question about what you may or may not see on the exam, uh, feel free to ask that in the chat because sometimes you can waste a lot of time on things that aren't you know, that testable. And debrief is from Victoria's test takers who tell us what they saw. Now, I have what I call hot debrief. And somebody asks, what's hot, that hot debrief? That means they literally just walked out. And at that level, the debrief can get very granular in a good way. So sometimes people give me debrief and, you know, it's not really, I can't figure out what it is that they actually encountered. But uh, this week on Series 7, uh, be prepared for a couple questions. This is pretty granular debrief. What I mean by that is it's pretty close to what you could expect. Uh, the question uh, they got asked was about a, uh, a caller. And it was how to generate additional income on a stock position and get protection. And the way we do that is a call or caller because you're not going to participate uh, below the strike price of the put or the strike price of the call, hence the term caller. Didn't get asked about recognizing it as a caller. I will uh, put a little carve out lecture at 326 on a caller. But basically what they got was how do you generate income and protect the stock? You sell a call that has a higher premium than the put. You're funding the purchase of the insurance through the sale of the call. By the way, it has to be a higher premium. Otherwise, it would be a cashless caller and there wouldn't be any income created. Uh, I posted a little nice article from Mark Cuban. Another one that was a debrief on Series 7, and I will post at uh, 354. It was a camouflage parity question. Almost any time that you hear in a question conversion price, you know you're being asked something about either parity of the stock or parity of the bond. And as usual with these kind of questions, what they had to do is determine uh, what was parity of the bond. And the way we do that is we take the conversion ratio, which you have to work to get sometimes in this question you did, and you would times that uh, by the current market price of the stock. And the parity was like 800 and the bond was 900. And the question was, what is the conversion premium, which in this case was $100. Now, if it was something less than parity, well, then there'd be an arbitrage opportunity. Okay, one last uh, granular kind of debrief was about a buy stop and a sell stop. And the question went something like, the customer expects good, no good news that will impact the stock price in a positive way. Uh, what type of order might they place? Hold on, second sentence. 
But if not, the stock would tank and wants to get rid of the stock they already have. And so what we'd recommend there, and this is uh, 65, could be on the seven as well, could be on the 66. Uh, you'd put us a buy stop above the resistance line. Again, they didn't use the resistance line, but above the current market price. And you would place a sell stop below the current market price. So uh, there is some debrief for you. Uh, we talked about that. Let me get rid of my, get rid of that. Uh, series playlists in the channels are a buffet. Take what you like, leave what you don't. I mean, there's literally 50 uh, videos on the SIE, for example. So the easiest way to be efficient in using the channel is to find your series exam. And then in that playlist, you will have all the videos that are available to you. Uh, remember, it's a free supplement, uh, you know, not a replacement for your paid study materials. The only playlist that has more, and it just came up this morning or this afternoon, is the Series 7. So this uh, test taker was going through my explication of the content outline and then said, you keep referring to these other videos. Where are they? And that's in that separate playlist called Video Lectures. So in the Series 7, there's six unique uh, playlists. Uh, just updates for the community. Uh, I had somebody taking a 57. I don't know if you're out there, Brian. Uh, and they asked, gee, in your 57 playlist, you know, you explicate practice tests where you, you know, do the practice exam and we can go along and hit pause and answer and, and compare to yours. And that's not in the 57. And I said, well, the reason it's not in the 57 is the people I work with, Teske, Kaplan, don't have a 57. They don't teach it. I tutor it and I teach it on demand privately, but you know, there's not content available to do that or I have to write it and I'm, you know, competent of writing content. I've been writing content for Kaplan for years and getting paid for it, but I just wasn't up to it. So I reached out to uh, Notman, uh, Notman Marks, and uh, boy, this is kind of exciting. They said, Dean, we will give you permission to explicate one of our 57 practice exams. So that's really exciting. Uh, that's now in the playlist. It premieres to uh, Thursday, next Thursday. But if you need it sooner, if you're out there, Brian, or your 57 test takers, just send me a private message and I'll give you a link that'll let you watch it before it premieres because it won't do any good if you're testing, you know, after the premiere. Uh, by the way, in any premiere, I try and do that. I can't always accommodate that request, but if you see a premiere and it's for your exam and uh, we had Daniel and he was asking for another Series 7 explication, and I said, really, you've watched all eight? <laughs> he said he had. So, okay. So, you know, maybe we'll put another one. And then I always do those polls on, you know, what content would you guys like to see? So uh, podcast, Brian and I were talking about doing a podcast and uh, he's more excited about it than I am. I'd be interested in your thoughts. I mean, I don't know how a podcast differs. I'm, you know, again, I'm an old dude, so I'm not sure how a podcast would differ from a live stream and what would be the added value to you guys for that. But uh, we'd be interested in your thoughts. Is there anybody interested in a podcast? I, I tell Brian, I think that's a lot of work because here we just hit the button and off we go. Uh, if you are on LinkedIn, I apologize. I did get a notice that uh, we broadcast to LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. And I did get a, a thing from our friends at LinkedIn and uh, my software provider that they were not able to do comments. Something went wrong at LinkedIn. So I think I responded to most of you, but if some of you have responded, and I haven't got back to you, just feel free to drop me another email and I'll, I'll do it. I apologize. Sometimes the emails fall through the cracks. So if you haven't heard from you, me, I promise you I'm not a flake. Just send me another one and say, Dean, uh, you know, I sent you an email. I haven't heard back. Uh, check out the community page. Uh, we have sister Reddit communities. We have uh, for the SIE and Series 7, uh, Reddit called R Series 7. For the 63, 65, 66, we have R66. For the Series 6, we have R Series 66. For 9, 10, and 24s, we have uh, the Reddits for that. Uh, discount code for Kaplan is Guru10. Uh, looks like I might be able to get them the bump at the Guru15 here shortly. So uh, hopefully we'll get a bigger discount. And for Brian's content, it's a Guru20 20% 20 20 discount. Uh, we do a drawing at the end. If you're new to our channel, we start with the debrief. We end with a drawing. Tonight's drawing is for a 30-minute coaching call that will be take place Thursday, February 6, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So if you win, you claim in an hour and then you send me an email. I'll put my email up there. And then I send you your link, uh, your Zoom invite. And you can assign that. You can share it. You can do with it what you will. Uh, Kyle just wanted to talk about study plan. I, I think uh, uh, Jessica wanted to do, uh, what did she want to do? She did something that's up there. I think Raphael, our current holder or winner, it wants to do options. So we'll do the options and the coaching call. And then we will uh, go ahead and uh, post that as well. 
All right, so let me check out. Uh oh, let me check out the comments. Okay, let's see where we're at. Be patient since I'm by myself tonight. Might take me a little longer to get to everybody. Okay, all right. Do, 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 do. Kudos, Curtis. The SIE, I always wish we get, you know, we're about, um, our, our SIE uh, viewers, uh, thank you so much. I mean, it's incredible. It's just really incredible. Um, I don't ask for, for likes and subscribers. And, you know, I first started on YouTube, everybody says you're supposed to tell people, smash the like button, ask them to subscribe. And I don't know, about a year into it, I thought, you know, if you either like it or you don't. And uh, But I've just been so, man, just a, blowing me away. And uh, how many views? We just went over a million three. We're going to have a million four views here in a little bit. And the subscriber list is I'm up like 1,200 subscribers on a month. So, wow. But, Curtis, I think a lot of what's feeding that I'm so excited about is SIE people finding us early. And, uh, you know, being with us as they matriculate through their SIE and then they're six or seven and then they're 63, 65, 66. And we have some people now have matriculated all the way to their 9, 10, and 24. And it's uh, just really very gratifying. So. Um, and that's now about a third. It's almost as much. We do almost as much views on SIE now as we do on the Series 7. Those are our two big ones. By the way, that's why I put up those polls so I can also, you know, measure the viewership against the content. So, you know, I know where there's some viewers. That 57, I probably get two views. <laughs> you know, if it's year 57, you pass. That's what you're what you want to do. So 63, 65. Uh, yeah. So I guess you already have a six, Curtis. There should be a six, I think, in between there. And SIE 6365 doesn't do you anything. Are you still looking for sponsorship, maybe? Yeah, we, we're here. That's what we're here. You know, we're here to be a bridge between your study materials and the actual test. So, you know, please don't forget that because, you know, we're not, you know, Brian is a paid supplement. I'm a free supplement. But again, uh, we're not all you need. You need to get some paid supplements. I love that. Greeting and salutations. I'm about, I told you, I'm about a half now where I say, greetings and salutations i still have my own uh, my st old verbal tick but eventually i'm gonna cross over and i'm gonna always say greetings and salutations <laughs> series seven houston texas all right you know texas is huge well i'll tell you i've been to houston many times mary one time i was in houston that i'm not making this up it was a hundred degrees with a hundred percent humidity i cannot handle that I mean, literally, because I'm from a, a place where if it's dark outside, it means it's cold. <laughs> you <know>? So, <laughs> a little freaky. And then, Mary, the zoning in Houston is just, oh, my God. Uh, maybe I didn't figure it out, Mary, Mary, but not very pedestrian friendly, not very public transportation friendly when I was there. So, you're welcome. You're welcome. Atlanta, Georgia. I spent a lot of time in Alpharetta, going back and forth to Alpharetta. I had so many points. It was incredible uh, from the Hilton that's there in Alpharetta. I'm forgetting what that little, it's a little like bar, a really great, well, I should say it's more than a bar. They sell like, you know, 30 different beers. It was uh, one of my stomping grounds while I was there. 65, there we go. Dallas, Texas, a lot of sevens in Dallas, Texas. Double Dean, baby. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, I'll figure out how to work, get that other camera up. You, you can see the rest of the studio. Uh, let's see, coming from North Carolina, Fidelity, boy. Uh, I go way, way back, Tiffany, with Fidelity. Fidelity used to have a, a department called Spartan, and Spartan was kind of the upper end of Fidelity, and they uh, had their offices at the World Trade Center there in Boston. And literally, I flew there once uh, once a week for like several years. I told Fidelity, I don't want to be a corporate trainer, and I'm not a long-term solution to your training needs. You need to you know, you need to have a person that's a Fidelity person <laughs> to do that. But I've always been a big fan of Fidelity. Uh, Past Perfect. I think you really needed a supplement free or paid for Past Perfect. Uh, they really get into the weeds, really, really, really get into the weeds. So uh, I don't know if Erica's with us on the call. She's using Past Perfect. And, uh, you know, she sends me a lot of emails and, you know, a lot, about half the time, Tiffany, I don't mind helping her answering the question, but it's like, you know, you're not going to see this. I also have a tutoring replay of some margin questions. Somebody literally paid for tutoring just to figure out some, you know, past perfect hellacious margin questions. I felt kind of bad because, you know, you're spending time and resources on things that aren't on the test. Uh, I share the story all the time. I had a conversation with a very senior person at Kaplan. And I said, those past perfect sales teams need a, a bonus because I think they have convinced these employers that not only do you need to pass the test, you need to be tormented in doing so. 
and it will help with product knowledge. But, you know, I am of the opinion that product knowledge comes from sales efforts, not taking tests. Think there you go. We got uh, we got lots of options. Oh my God, there's like 50 option videos. There's 100 option video uh, practice questions. So if options your thing, we got it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Love, love the feedback. Options, mutual funds, suitability. Not, uh, not surprised. Remember the three styles of questions you get on your exam are recognition. You know, T plus two, option agreement, 15 days, practical application. You know, current yield, calculating parity, and judgment. And almost all the suitability questions are judgment questions. Those are the hardest questions you get on uh, your exam. And suitability, you know, you can almost get it to a 50-50. And then you got to kind of go, okay, what am I going to pull the trigger on? About 10% of your exam is uh, judgment questions. And that's a lot uh, higher than the SIE. The SIE is mainly recognition and very little practical application, maybe one or two judgment questions. So judgment questions, those ones you can't memorize. You got to kind of do that. So uh, you definitely suitability. The way I tell people to attack suitability, because most of the suitability questions are in function three, which is investment vehicles. And so if you're really solid on the investment vehicles. That will help you in suitability because you can get rid of things quickly that you know are not the case. Like, Somebody seeking liquidity, I can toss partnerships out of there, for example. So it makes it easier for you to do process of elimination, right? If I know a zero coupon bond gives me a set sum of money at some future date, assuming they don't default and wouldn't default to the strip, then I can, you know, use that to kind of get a little tighter uh, answer set on that. So, so there's 91 questions on function three. So. It uh, doesn't surprise me. Now, I don't see her munis. I would add Zelda the munis. I don't know how many muni questions you say, said you saw, but I always tell people function three, that's where you want to spend your time. Function one, by the way, the committee gets together. Function one is can you find a customer? That's the test writing committee. Function two is can you open an account? Function three is what do you put in the account? 91 questions on investments. Function four is what takes place after the trade, right? That's about the order department, uh, market orders, limit orders, that kind of thing. Uh, the margin department, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the uh, cashiering department, that kind of stuff. So make sure that third one, uh, you're on top of that. So I always tell munis, options, and mutual funds, a uh, package products. And if you uh, get pretty good at that, you know, you're in good shape. Usually when people miss the mark, I don't want to send out negative vibes, but they almost passed every function. And you need to have a function, hopefully function three, where you ace it. Because then you can get awful spastic and still pass. I mean, if you miss every question on margin, you only miss two, three questions. That's so not a big deal. Yeah, if you, again, recognition, flashcard stuff. I hope you have flashcards. Uh, well, you know, again, buffet, you know, do what you, you take, what you like, leave what you don't. But I would hope I mention it. Sometimes I forget. But while you're watching my explications, for example, that you have like I always have a little notepad with me or four by six cards. I have my little posty pads here. And if I see a uh, fodder for a flashcard or a note, it's nice to have that handy because then you can use that, uh, you know, to come up with those flashcards. Another good resource is Quizlet. I really think you should make your own flashcards because, you know, I'm an old school guy. Again, an old dude coming out. But Quizlet does have some uh, very good flashcards. So uh, you can check that out as well. Uh, I'm kind of old school. I, you know, make my own. 3,000. I love it. QBank usage is huge. You know, if I were a real accountability partner and, uh, you know, if you didn't pass, you had to talk to me about whether I'm going to let you retake. One of the first things I'm going to do with my admin key is pull up your past perfect STC, Kaplan, Knopman, and see how, what was your QBank usage. Because, you know, QBank usage has a direct correlation. If you're not doing questions, people err on not doing enough questions. At Kaplan, I think it was like 3,200 questions. So you got to do enough questions to get familiar with, you know, uh, that rhythm uh, of that. So um, I think people start too late. And then the other thing you got to do is practice test because you got to find out about remediation and if it's necessary or not. And so, you know, you can't be waiting to last minute. I, listen, I got I don't know how to do this on my tutoring page, but it, over the last week or so, I've had people literally book tutoring the night before their exam. And I'm like, you know, what are we going to do now? <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe it's insurance for you to, yeah, an insurance policy, you're buying an insurance policy and I talk to you and maybe you feel better. I don't know, placebo effect, but I would prefer you do a practice final and you uh, get your QBank usage up about a week out because a week out means then there can be intervention if necessary. You know, hopefully you don't need intervention, but 
Yeah, well, Mary, that's what we're talking about. I just don't know what, it, what we would do in the podcast. So what we'd call it, what we do, if you have any ideas. I've got some of my best ideas. So people, uh, I think they don't know it's a joke about the Series 7 guru. My haters say, oh, he talks about himself in the third person. Uh, no, originally it was just me and I was on uh, one of these social media sites. And one of the younger folks uh, said, Dean, you got to have like a social media handle. I said, I do. You know, so and they came up with it. So I'm sure there's some great, great ideas about video podcasts. And just like I say, I had, uh, I'm not as uh, motivated as my friend Brian. Uh, but, uh, you know, if Brian wants to do it, you know. Yeah. I, so, again, I just need your input about what you think we would talk about. So, Jamie, uh, you, well, I love that profile pic. That looks, that looks like a guy who manages some big money there. But, uh, Jamie, yeah, I just haven't figured out. How to do that. I'm glad to see you, Jamie. I see the link, LinkedIn comments are working because last week they were not. Yeah, you know that. Well, that's true, Zelda. If we had a podcast, we would. We, I, I. So just so you know, the, the Zelda, that's a great idea, and here's why I can. I that speaks to me a little bit. I give a lot of thought about not sending a mixed traffic signal to Google. What I mean by mixed traffic signal is there are other things, Zelda, I might want to talk to you guys about or make a video about, but let's say I make a video about, uh, you know, I'm a huge MBA fan. And then I make an MBA video and I put it on there. Then it, then, you know, people like you, for example, I think it would be fair to say, Dean, I don't go to your channel to get an MBA video. <laughs> so I'm very conscious of only putting things in the channel that fit the mission, which is exam prep for FINRA NASA exams, period, full stop. You know, that's it. So, so that's, I like that. We could go really off topic and People are always asking about economics or their their career or whatever. That's uh, that's a good suggestion, Zelda. So that's the first. I'm going to write that down for Brian, 2154. And that would be a good idea. Assuming you want to listen to us talk about other things. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, 66, uh, investment advisor. There's Erica. How are you, Erica? Working hard, I'm sure. Erica's uh, taking a, becoming pretty quickly one of my favorite students. Uh, test takers because she's dedicated, she's disciplined, she's organized. Uh, you know, she's always seeking feedback. So uh, she passed her SIE, and I think she's going to take down her Series Seven. And so uh, we're going to get you through this, Erica. We can't have uh, you're almost. I think of yourself as kind of a, a alumnus, if you will. So we got to make sure we take care of you and get you through this thing. Well, first thing, Cynthia, is you should definitely print out that PDF of the test content outline. It's on the FINRA website, and I would always have that next to me while I'm studying. And what I would use it for is to see where is this question in terms of the content outline and how at risk is it. So I would be proactive when I'm studying those practice questions. Uh, Cynthia, I was just giving kudos to Erica, uh, and uh, you're welcome to do Erica. You know, what's, you know, I hope Erica knows she's, you know, she might catch me sometimes on the morning where it's not speaking to me to right away, you know, help her with a question. But uh, you're welcome to send it to me and, you know, make it maybe a Dean to do side list. Hold on. I got to find this thing here. And, uh, you know, what uh, uh, people do is they'll send me an email with that. If, if it's Kaplan, you just can send me the QID, Cynthia. So I don't know who your test prep vendor is. But if it's uh, some other test prep vendor, then you got to cut and paste. Uh, again, time for another little bit of a rant. Uh, I'm not here to do your homework for you. So if you send me. What to me looks like, for example, a past perfect question and you're being monitored by your employer and you got to get through certain questions. You want Dean to do it for you. I had a guy and he got a little upset with me, but I said, listen, it's not my job to do your practice questions. I'm more than happy to explain your miss. And if you give me, so, you know, the deal is if it's not Kaplan, you need to send me the entire question with your attempted answer and the rationale. So I can see, you know, the other reason I want to see the rationale is because I don't want to give you the same rationale accidentally. I'd like to try and explain it to you in some different way. So anyways, that's the so that's one thing, Cynthia. I mean, that's just off the top of my head. Maybe that's what you do is that you just, uh, you know, uh, say, Dean, I got this question. You know, how, how do I handle it? Yeah, a podcast. So Ruby, yeah, we're, we're talking about it. Zelda had a great idea. I could... Is a guy who's it's kind of speaking to me now, Zelda. You got me out of the funk of like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you know? there's all kinds of things that, you know, I'm a guy who wakes up in the morning and I read the paper and do some things. And, you know, uh, it'd be interesting to see. So it's speaking to me a little more. Brian will be happy that it's speaking to me a little more. Uh, Kelly, at the very end of our call, 
we uh, put something in the chat and I have a kind of like a wheel of fortune thing and it spins around uh, based on whatever the word is tonight. We haven't established that yet, uh, but we will. And let me just show you again. I always want to make sure you understand the parameters of that. I don't like having contingent liabilities. So, you know, I don't like to say that this is, you know, a free floating 30 minutes I owe somebody. So when we put down the chat and I do the drawing, if you win, uh, it will be for Thursday the 2nd, 5 p.m. Pacific time. You'll get a Zoom invite when I get your email confirmation that you're the winner. Uh, that call will be recorded and we share it in a coaching call playlist. And you can check that out. And if you've already passed your exam, for example, uh, you can assign it to someone else in the office. So, you know, maybe you're in the office with Erica and, you, you know, you're on the call if it's a victorious test taker in our live stream and you don't need it and Erica wants it. I don't care. You know, you can give it to whoever you want. You can share it. So again, if Erica wins, I'm hoping she's going to win here shortly, but it's not fixed. I shouldn't even say it because now if Erica wins, people are going to think I, you know, put my thumb on it. But let's assume Erica wins. She wants to share the call. Uh, she can do that as well. All right, let's see. Thank you. Thank you. I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. I've learned so much. I told you, I learned a lot from my younger folks. I think I've learned more from my students during this two years that I've not been on the in the corporate campus setting teaching classes than I've ever learned. I mean, about, you know, just stupid stuff like podcasts. And what was the other day? Somebody showed me something that was so cool. It was like, it's, I know it sounds silly, but it was something like a, how to, you know, hit a click a button and make it do what I've been doing like manually. Uh, oh my God, that's, <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> wish I would have known that like two years, two, two years ago. Uh, sales supervisor in the house, a series 10. Woo -hoo. Uh, I haven't, Brianna, yet put up the timestamps for the Series 9 practice test that's in the playlist. There's a Kaplan Series 9 play, uh, practice exam. Hi, 70s. I think you're okay. Uh, the 10 is a real slog. Oh, excuse me, 10. I have a, a, a 10 at practice in the exam in there. That 10 is a slog, man. It is a real slog. I mean, I even know the stuff, and just even doing that practice exam was just exhausting. So um, have you already, Brianna, got the 9? The reason I ask is I think maybe getting the nine before the 10 makes a little more sense, but maybe you already got your nine. So if you already got your nine, well, then 10 it is. Uh, the most, what should you focus most on this week for a 10? Uh, sales supervision. You know, I, I think of a, a series nine, 10 sales supervisor, babysitting sevens. So sales supervision. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on margin. Uh, you know, I'd have a general understanding of market making and banking, but sales supervision, where's the actions at? Yeah, I, I think, uh, Nick, that's true. I mean, by design, the Kaplan Q Bank is designed to be harder. So I should tell you there are different theology that people have. And I hear people all the time saying none of the test prep vendors have questions or like the test. And, you know, that's not true. I mean, you know, these test prep vendors wouldn't be around if their questions didn't align it to some extent uh, with the exam. And some are better than other test prep vendors. So you know, I think past perfect, for example, gives you too much, but too much is better than not enough. And I think they have questions that are spot on and then they have questions that are kind of the weed somewhere. I think uh, the broad avenues and highways is where you need to stay. And I think STC, Kaplan, Notman stay within that. And then the Kaplan, I think what makes Kaplan tips in favor of Kaplan is just that QBank has got so many questions and can be manipulated so easy. So, you know, and then I think AD Banker is a little light. And I think, uh, you know, uh, trading consultants is perhaps a little light. So that's where I think about it. when I say light, I mean like QBanks. So um, the Kaplan QBank with my Guru 10 discount code is like 60 bucks. And I would recommend that as your, if you don't have that in the quick sheets, I get to like under 20 for that. That would be my first investment for a paid supplement. And then you can uh, con consider, if you already have the QBank, uh, Brian's paid supplements. Uh, I think are excellent as a bridge. They come with that whole video series as well as the uh, quick notes. So that would be my my second uh, investment recommendation. Not, by the way, not time to get frugal in passing your exams. Ugh. There you go. So, yeah, you got it. You know, feeling better, it sounds stupid, but feeling better is important. I, I can't prove it, but anecdotally, confidence is 10 questions, I think. I think a lot of people, people who don't have confidence in their answers you got to have confidence in your study plan, confidence in yourself, and most importantly, confidence in your answers. I just had a guy today, I was helping out with a question, and he brought all kinds of stuff into this question that wasn't there. 
I said, where is that in this question? It's nowhere to be found. Kind of tough love. I, he might be unhappy with me. I was going to put a heart or something, but I'm not very good at that. Like, you know, this is, you know, I'm not as big a jerk as I sound like in this, <laughs> in this, in this setting. But anyways, uh, I said, listen, you can't do that. You know, people who go, what if they meant? They don't. So you got to be real careful uh, about, uh, you know, bringing stuff into questions and using your own brain housing group against yourself. Sometimes smart people will struggle because they're too smart. They're, they're making it more difficult. The other thing I would tell you is I always ask, did you change answers? Because if you change answers, you know, that's also a red flag as well. Yeah, it's good to come from the channel. Even we have to, when Victoria's test takers come, it's always good for morale. So I asked somebody, I, forget, I don't know if they're here. I asked him to pop in. He sent me a, a email saying he passed it. We had a lot of passes over the last two days. One guy who didn't miss it. And I, I'm very rarely surprised when somebody doesn't make it that I thought was. And he was one of those people. And it's it's uh, depressing, I know. But uh, everybody else has been been nailing it. So uh, maybe he'll show up today and uh, and give us a, you know a morale boost. But I'm right on manifest, study, and believe, right? Angel, how are you, my friend? There you go. I Brianna, well, then it's the 10, right? <laughs> and then hopefully, hopefully you're done. It's been weird lately, Brianna. I've had people, this has never been the case historically, but lately I have people who are taking 24s and then nines and tens as well, or nines and tens and 24s. And back in my day, uh, I had a 24, a four and a 53, and there would be no reason for me to have a nine and 10 because those, those registrations would encompass everything on there. And then back in the day, Brianna, that was a four day class for the uh, 24, the 53 and the four. And then it was also a combination nine, 10 class. And I used to tell people, if you want to get a good deal on the 24, 53, four, buy the nine, 10, come to class, you get the same four days. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Cynthia, I've been so excited. We have a community uh, called R Series 24. Cynthia, I don't know if you're one of our participants there, uh, but I'm very pleased with that. It's it's what I'm most pleased about is it's become a real community where I don't need to kind of, you know, try and you know promote it. It's just a bunch of people in uh, similar situations. Brianna, I don't know if you're a participant. It's for nines, tens, and 24s. And uh, a guy posted Sunday that he was just getting ready for Sunday fun day and studying and uh, talk about a morale boost. He had like eight or nine people just you know, buck him up and say, me too. And in a similar situation, I think the live streams are like that. So if you can, you know, if you can try and get a sense of community, I think the worst thing about the pandemic is it's kind of uh, busted up what used to be a communal effort in terms of study. What I mean by that is if you're at the office and you're in the bullpen together and, you know, even if you're 24, there's people can go to lunch and talk to you. So when you're out on your own, it makes it a little tougher. And so we now have Cynthia people that matriculated all the way through uh, the channel in terms of providing a, a supplement as well as uh, have joined some of our Reddit community. So uh, I just love that uh, 24 community. Uh, I can't, again, you know, it's like this call. I can't, I was going to split up and have a, like a Reddit for nine and 10, but there's just not enough there. So it's nine, 10, 24 for that thing. You belief is a big part of it. Uh, finish all the STC Q bank. Is it worthwhile to purchase series 10? Yeah, I think so. Brianna, I definitely. And the other thing I, do, I don't like to do too many commercials, but if you do, if you have the capital Q bank, I can be more helpful. I'll help you with any questions. So right now, uh, Erica is using a vendor and I'm helping her. So I, I'm agnostic on the channel and on the reddits and social media about who your test prep vendor is. But when your test prep vendor is Kaplan, I can be a lot more helpful because, you know, I'm more familiar with the Q bank and you can send me a QID and I can bring it up and you don't have to cut and paste it. So, yeah, I think it's worthwhile, uh, particularly for nines and tens. I, on all of your exams, it's just really frustrating to me sometimes. People get frugal, too frugal. I mean, I understand people who don't have resources, so I get it. I mean, if you listen, good news. You're, if you're poor and deserve to be rich, this is the industry for you. So, you know, maybe that part of the industry hasn't happened for you yet. So I understand if you don't have the economics to uh, do anything other than be frugal. But if you have the uh, resources, I would say, man, go all in. Anything that's going to be helpful, why not? You know, QBank, Brian, you know, tutoring, you know, whatever you need, whatever you need. Yeah, confidence is really, uh, you know, like I say, I, I wish I had a magic pill, Aaron. I mean, you know, that's one thing I can't help people with is, you know, uh, you know, I had somebody get really upset with me. It was private. It wasn't public. But I said, you know, the biggest problem you have is confidence. And they thought that was, I, I don't know, I 
I'm, I told you I'm out of touch as an old dude, but you know, I, I didn't think that was, you know, basically he was upset because he felt nobody should ever tell you that you lack confidence. So <laughs> I, I guess we build it up without telling you that it's the problem. I, I, I don't know. So, you know, one month full-time studying. Yeah. So we have a lot of people that aren't getting paid to study. So, you know, uh, I call it carve out a study block and I just talk to somebody and they, they, you know, they're working all day. So, you know, I said, well, where can you carve out, you know, 45 minutes, an hour and a half, uh, Brianna, you're taking a 10. I had a very senior lady taking her nine and 10. And I had to really kind of, again, tough love. She kept telling me, oh, yeah, yeah, I put in an hour day, put 15 minutes in on the subway. And then at lunch, I did another 15 minutes. And she got through with all her 15 minutes and it added up to an hour and a half. And I said, you can't do that. It's too distracting. You've got to t pull yourself away. Brianna, 24s, nines and 10s, I think it's even more difficult because it's harder to pull yourself away. Cause a lot of times if you're taking a nine or 10 or 24, you have other responsibilities for, at the firm and you know, you're maybe have other uh, responsibilities at home. And you know, so you're not typically just out of college four months with pay. So make sure you carve out that time that you need, by the way, and feel free and Nick, uh, you know, I, I tell people be aggressive with your firm. If you need to push back with a trainer or, or an accountability partner, I would push back. I, uh, I would initially make a 20 hour kind of down payment on my study schedule and then, you know, adjust saying, okay, I'm going to need more time or I'm going to need less time. You know, some people do weeks, I do hours, but you know, whatever the case may be. So if you have a month or two months, whatever the case is, you could start there. Looks like you guys just want to talk about some, I don't see any questions here for, you know, actual questions, but that's fine. Part of it's just uh, talking, shooting the breeze. Uh, failed the seven month, a month ago. Take it again next Thursday. Still scoring mid sixties. Well, I've had Kelson people get at least as low as fifty eight and pass. I wouldn't want you to be there. So it's very likely you're going to pass if you stay dedicated, disciplined, and organized, and finish strong. I had a guy on Friday got a sixty seven, and and it was a test that has very strong correlation. I said it, it had that been the real test today, Friday sixty seven, you would have failed. But you are testing Monday. And so we need to find a few more points here over the weekend. Good news. He found those points and he passed. So, you know, we would like you to be ideally in the low 70s, but I would not discourage you if you are getting in the mid 60s from testing. I think it's every likelihood you could pass. It's not where ideally I'd like. If you're in the 70s, then we say all you got to do is stick the landing, right? So it looks like you're not in the stick the landing mode yet. Uh, with a month, though, a uh, month ago, so... Thursday. So this is Tuesday. Uh, maybe do one more practice exam, Kelsey, and tomorrow. If you haven't done the Test Geek final, the Test Geek final in the seven playlist is there. And you might want to try it, hit pause, do it tomorrow because you don't want to, you know, you don't want Hippocratic oath. You don't want to go backwards. Hit pause, answer, hit play, score it up, and that'll give you a real good idea where you're at. So if you get, as I said, 67 on that, that would have been a 67. But if you find that out tomorrow, that could be good or bad for your confidence. So you're going to have to decide whether you want to do it or not. Um, uh, again, I'd be interested in who your vendor is with mid sixties. If it's past perfect, if it's a uh, Kaplan, if it's STC, you will pick up a few points to the exam. So you're not as far away as that mid sixty sounds. That's right on borderline of passing without any additional work. So thousand percent. I agree. All right. Well, welcome to our community. We'd love to have new folks joining us. So, uh, thank you. Uh, tomorrow, woohoo! <laughs> so, it, it's amazing, Lasha. That there's two videos that I've just been, you know, uh, surprised with. It's always funny because I make videos I think should be popular and are not. And I've learned now that if somebody, you know, has an idea for a video, I probably should make it because they end up being more right than me about what I think would be a good video. But anyways, I have a the tip tricks and uh, memory aids, uh, Lasha. That one I used to call mnemonics, and then. Some test guy just said, hey, Dean, I love your tips, tricks, and memories. I go, man, that's a better title than I got. <laughs> so that's been popular for two years. It's the most popular thing on the channel. And then uh, I used to, during the old days, uh, they used to give us two, three-hour sessions, and it was given on the third Saturday of college campus. And I would show up and uh, have a whiteboard, and you know, we're not going to learn anything in that lunch hour break, but I used to do that. And I thought, well, why, why not do that? Because people were telling me they would watch a video before the video. And I made that series seven in 60 minutes. And I can't tell you how many contributions that's made to uh, test taking victories. Uh, you know, if you need confidence, just read those video description comments. There's lots of good ones there. 
Um, and I've been, you know, overwhelmed. And then Lasha, not overthinking it, I made a series SIE in 60 minutes. And a, <laughs> I'm going to do a series 57 in 57 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, but that's the other one you might want to do is the math. Now, be careful on my math one, Lasha. I didn't say all the math on series seven. The title is all the math necessary. So every once in a while, somebody sent me a nasty like email saying, oh, that's not all the math. You didn't have this there. You didn't have that there. I'm like, well, listen, you know, it's not about all the math. It's about the necessary math. Woohoo! Uh, after passing my seven couple weeks, take 63. But at 63 is a bunch of legalese. So that's where you should read the book cover to cover and just do practice exams. Practice exams, practice exams, practice exams. And Bennett, I know you know what's coming next. I have a video. In this video, I'm very proud of Bennett. It's called The Mighty 90. So you get to get some inside information when you come to a live stream. So Bennett, here's what I attempted, I think, successfully. When I teach a 63 class, it's a half a day. And I thought, there's no one who's going to watch Dean for four hours. Listen, I understand I do long-form narrative lectures. And I guess I do need a podcast because, you know, people say I'm long-winded. That's who I am. So, you know, I ain't going to turn into somebody different tomorrow. Anyways, long story short, I, I was actually been at, able to cram that entire half-day class into that 90-minute video on the Uniform Securities Act. I think it is a very target-rich 90 minutes. So that's one I would recommend to you as well as my 63 and 60 minutes. I have two uh, great practice exams there for you. I have a Kaplan Series 63 practice final. I have a Test Geek practice final. I don't know if any of you guys have been uh, following my Mometrics. Mometrics gave me permission to do some of their practice exams. I, you know, I, I would give the Test Geek an A and I'd give uh, Kaplan A and Mometrics. You know, I still have it up there, but it's uh, it's it, it's it has a high beta. Some of their stuff I go, oh, that's pretty damn good. And other parts of it I go, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But make sure you do the test geek at least for sure. Yeah, Brianna, I just love that, this 24 community. I mean, it's just, it's uh, been an awesome community. Uh, I told you, Brianna, we have people there that, uh, we had one guy who passed this maybe before you joined, Brianna. We had a guy who passed and he said he had nobody else to share it with. And I thought, man, I feel bad for him. Like, you know, family or, you know, it's us. Well, okay, well, it's us. <laughs> you know, so, so uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. The other thing I like about it is there's no drama on it. It's, you know, just just people who are trying to help each other pass the test and not a bunch of other stuff. Uh, no, uh, I lost you. Let me see. What was your exam you're taking? You're taking the, uh, what was it? Uh, Lasha was new. I'm, I'm going back, Lasha, trying to, could you put back in the chat? You're taking your 67 exam tomorrow. Okay, that's, I see that one. Would you say, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're asking about 63 or 65 or 66. Um, 63, zero formulas. 65, 66, there is some practical application. There is some math. If you tell me you missed the uh, 65, 66 because of math, I'm going to say, I don't believe you. You had other problems. And it's not the higher math. It's basically arithmetic and division. We're not going to ask you, for example, to do a standard deviation calculation or future value or present value, we will ask you to understand inputs or outputs. So depends on uh, what you're doing. I have a 50, uh, I wasn't sure if this was a good idea, but I made a 50 question practice exam with the math that you can encounter way more than you're gonna get. You're gonna get four or five. But you know, I can never decide whether to overkill it, you know, like non-equity options. I got 20 questions where you're not getting 20. So, you know. Yeah, if you're, if you, the other Red Hoop communities we have are pretty good. The six I just started because I felt like sixes were getting shortchanged in terms of community here. And, you know, on the Reddits, they didn't have their own little kind of spot. And so uh, we created, so that's relatively new. It doesn't have a lot of folks. So if you're a Series 6 and no Series 6s, uh, please uh, help us build up that little community. Our Reddit 7, SIE and 7 community has a lot of folks in it. It has a little more drama, but, you know, it is what it is. And it's anonymous. I like the Reddits because they're anonymous. You don't have to tell us who you are. So I feel like you can be more comfortable in the 24 Reddit, for example, if you have a, you know, you don't want to, like somebody said, oh, I told my friend I'd park his registration for him. And then, you know, we're all going to say, well, wait a minute, you know, we probably should review that. It's not something you should be doing. And, and it's not in a form where, you know, we can <laughs> dime you out to uh, FINRA. So uh, that part I like on the uh, Reddit that you can, uh, re if you remain anonymous, I'm not anonymous. I think everybody knows who I am. Well, I take that back. Every once in a while, somebody 
will say, hey, the more you really like this Series 7 Guru guy, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, it's me. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're going to have to do current yield for sure. What an investment pays you by what it costs you. You're going to have to do parity on Series 7, uh, break-evens on options, certainly, certainly. A uh, discount code is Guru10. Guru10. So let me see where that's at. I think I have it here somewhere. There you go. So for Kaplan, it works for any Kaplan product. So Guru10, it's a discount code at checkout. And uh, Brian is uh, Test Geek is Guru20. I don't get commissions on either of those, but I told Brian if we're going to do a podcast and we're going to start selling stuff, then, you know, we got to figure out what Dean is going to get paid if I'm getting paid or not. <laughs> Let's see. I apologize when I go back. Oh, thanks, by the way, if you're helping putting out in the chat, Zelda. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Wow, that's fantastic, Nick. That's fantastic. You know, uh, I, again, I'm a little different than other folks. Other people, you know, don't think questions are important. Uh, I don't think you should be learning by missing questions. I mean, you should start transitioning to questions towards the end of your study plan, but you definitely want to do questions like the chapter checks to kind of see if it's time to move on. So the the bigger error that most people do is not doing enough. So doing too much, Nick, I think is wonderful. So, you know, that's a wonderful place to be. Uh, beta is a measurement of volatility. Did I miss you, Eric? I'm sorry. Let me go back up here. If I, if I miss you, just put it back in the chat. Let's see. I'll see what else I missed. So beta is very testable, Eric, on your Series 7. They'll say a measurement of a stock or fund's volatility is compared to the market as a whole can best be described as, and you would come up with beta. Now, the other way they might ask this, another way they might ask this on your exam is they might say, uh, what is the beta on an S&P 500 fund, right? So the beta would be one, whatever the market does, that's what this fund does, right? And then Beta is that volatility it might be important. I mean, we might want to take a higher beta because we're trying to get you to your financial destination a little sooner because maybe your time horizon isn't what it uh, we would like it to be, right? So that's beta. That's very testable. Then, you know, so let's say the market goes up 10%. My S&P 500 fund should go up 10% because it'll be to one. Uh, alpha would be excess return. You're certainly not going to get any alpha in an index fund. But let's say the market went up 10% and I have a beta one and a half. So that means I'm expecting a 15% return. So I got an 18% return. That would be 3% alpha. Alpha is the excess over beta. Now, that could be a positive number or it could be a negative number. Now, on the Series 7, Erica, that's pretty straightforward just the way I laid it out. On the uh, 65, 66, it gets a little more in the weeds. So once you pass your 7, you can worry about having a little more depth to that conversation about beta and alpha. You know, there's a lot of, there's a famous website called Seeking Alpha, Seeking Excess Returns. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Cynthia, I don't know if that was you about opening the window. It should be a matter of routine in your back office. So uh, apparently there's been some problems with uh, with uh, FINRA and the, uh, you know, the CRDs and registrations, there's been some funky stuff going on, but it should be just in the normal process to reopen a testing window through your, your whoever's doing that at your firm. Usually you don't have you reopen a testing window. It's uh, assigned to you by somebody at your firm and it should be a matter of routine. So if you're having problems on that, uh, my guess would be maybe you're a smaller firm or something, but that's a pretty routine kind of a thing to be able to do. Uh, by the way, Cynthia, the other thing, if you fail an exam, you can still set your test date. It just won't let you set it unless it's 30 days out. So sometimes I'll tell people, well, go set your test date. Well, I can't take make set a test date till 30 days. So I just said, no, no, no. You can't take the test for 30 days, but you can certainly set a test date that is out there. Uh, I think I'm a big fan of having a test date because your brain does a little better when it has a test date and knows what to focus on. Yeah, Zelda Performance Tracker is awesome. Awesome. Oh, Jack, <laughs> I know your profile picture is just for tonight based on getting a 72. <laughs> but, uh, 
Well, uh, it's kind of been all over. Um, I have some debrief here. I, it's not, I didn't share it because it's, uh, it's in very rough form. Uh, but, um, and this is pretty standard fares. Uh, two questions on discounted cash flow. I'll put this at uh, 50 minutes. Uh, not surprising. Uh, basic definitions, no calculation. A uh, few questions on uh, BDs, investment advisors, their agents, and investment advisor reps. Can't stress that enough to you, Jack. You got to really be careful about the cast of characters and who the question is about. Is it about a broker dealer? Or is it about an investment advisor? Is it about an agent or an investment advisor rep? If it's about an investment advisor, is it federal or is it state? Very, very important. I told you, Jack, I had somebody today and I was I was tough love. They they said that they would have to register with the state and the feds. Never. That's just a really, really bad miss. Now, I told them so, by the way, because I don't want them to miss it on the real test. Um, exemptions, you know, exempts uh, transactions, uh, always there, fiduciary transactions, uh, bona fide loans, collaterals, bona fide loan, that kind of stuff. Uh, two questions on tenants in common. You're definitely going to get that. Uh, one question on uh, comparing it with rights of survivorship. Uh, current ratio, very almost always there. Uh, recognizing the NAV of a mutual fund current ratio. This is pretty standard, by the way. This is nothing that surprises me. Um, S&P index uh, market. Oh, this comes up all the time uh, that the Dow Jones is price weighted, that the others are not, and that, uh, you know, what is the proper benchmark for whatever you're looking at, the Russell 2000, the Wilshire 5000, EFA, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's see. Uh, recognizing dividends from uh, the Muni Bond Fund are tax free because remember the dividends are the pass through of the interest. So that shows up quite a bit. Remember, if it's a dividends from a mutual fund that isn't a tax free fund, then that would be taxable. Uh, one question about the uh, distinction between futures and options. They're both, uh, you know, they're both, you know, futures, but the two questions that usually show up on futures is that uh, futures are better than uh, forwards because you don't have counterparty risk and they're standardized. And then you could expect a question like, you know, if I think the price of soybeans is going up, I go long soybeans and I think it's going down, I can uh, go short. So pretty standard, pretty standard. Uh, test taking tips. I have a whole bunch of test taking tips. I have a whole video on test taking tips, Oscar. So what do you recommend for the series seven exam? Well, I recommend, uh, you know, all my videos, there's hundreds of them, you know? but maybe start out, uh, Oscar, what I always on the channel is say, start here. So if you're taking your series seven, it says on the homepage, series seven, start here. And what the start here is, is the explication of the FINRA content outline. I kind of like that Oscar, because that gives you an overview of the entire exam. Uh, and I think, I don't know how many videos are in there, but you could make it through there and probably, Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say five, six hours. I have videos there on each of the sections. It starts with what the test, the weighting of the test. And then from there, you can decide what you want to do in terms of the other playlists. Like I have a playlist for lectures, video lectures, options lectures, uh, tutoring replays, uh, practice exams. So uh, I'd watch that first sequence and then decide you know, what you want to do in terms of that. In terms of test prep vendors, I recommend Kaplan for sure. But like I say, we, you know, there's people who do very well with Pass Perfect, SDC, Notman. Yeah, right on, right on. Tons of questions, dude. Uh, I, I, right on, right on. We're simpatico, Zell. That's the biggest van line. We are simpatico. Yeah, Brian's great. I don't know what happened to Brian today, but I should tease uh, Ken. You know, he says, oh, I only do it by myself and Dean's got help. So maybe today I'll tease him and say, hey, I decided to do it myself uh, as well. <laughs> Wasn't successful to Bassa. Sure. Ugh, heartbreaking. Yeah, that is heartbreaking. Um, I'm not a big fan, Ruby, of AD Baker. So just me. I'm just not. So um, I would strongly recommend whether it's Brian's supplement or a Kaplan Q Bank or uh, I, I sometimes here's, here's Ruby where I have negative uh, energy uh, for AD Banker. I, when I look at you missing it by 4%, I am tempted. Now, if you have that was past perfect or Kaplan or Notman or STC Ruby. I think that would be on you and not your test prep vendor. But when I see an AD banker uh, student who barely misses, I kind of think, ugh, was that Ruby or was that their content? So for what it's worth, that's my opinion on AD banker. So 
You shouldn't feel too bad. 4% it means you're not, it wasn't knowledge do- deficit. Well, then again, that's even worse. I'm seeing where you said you were getting 80 to 92. So, you know, that's, I, I call that correlation, Ruby. So that is a problem when there's no correlation. Now that could be, I don't know how many practice their questions there are at ADA Maker, but it could be you memorize them, but that, there's, there's something funky if you're getting 80 to 92 and then you don't make your mark. So again, I don't think that's on you. I think that's on AD Banker. So whether it's using the channel, I love Ruby when people use the channel as a supplement, it's a free supplement. And, uh, you know, I th- really recommend people who are doing that. Or I told you Erica's using past perfect. I love it when people are using the channel, maybe to confirm that. So just be, I would say, you know, lean into the channel a little more if you're using AD Banker or, uh, for different reasons or past perfect. There you go. There, that's exactly what we're here for, Teresa. So that's what we're here for. For Series 7. Okay, well, we, did, we I think we answered that, Lasha. Uh, just watch that All the Math uh, video. I walk you through literally to a laundry list. Another suggested lecture that I didn't want to do because I don't like laundry lists. But somebody who suggested, asked uh, for it, and I did it. And I go through you know, the whole exam and the math. Well, 63 uh, should be pretty good. Yeah, I think that's great. I think you made a really smart investment. Uh, Kaplan is spot on on the NASA exam. So there's not going to be anything that surprises you on the Kaplan 63. Uh, The six gives you a little more than you need. But as we just discovered, Ruby, uh, you know, more is better than not enough. right? So There you go, Aaron. Thank you so much. I always love Aaron. Somebody confirming in chat what Dean's telling me because it's hard to believe, you know, you know, I've had people sometimes when on a bad day or and I'm tempted to say, oh, well, is that really the truth? Like, well, why would I lie to you? I mean, you know, why would I misread you about what's on the exam? So it's always helpful to have somebody confirm, you know, what, what we're telling them. Is there a big three or four to worry about? I don't know. I don't think so. I think one of the challenges, Zelda, is that on 65 and 66, there isn't a lot of, a lot of target-rich environments. What I mean by that is it's a lot of twosies and threesies. The two biggest Zelda for 65 and 66, and I'll make a entry here, 5701, are communications, which is about 10 questions. That's for both 65 and 66. And on ethical business practices, which is uh, 14 questions. So that's 24 questions. And that's about as big as a, a honey hole as you're going to get on the NASA exams. By the way, if you're taking 63, on ethical business practices is big as well. Uh, no, not really, as I just answered, right? It's kind of, you know, kind of a lot of minutia. Yeah, margins a waste of time on the seven, for sure. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, I would suggest uh, Blood Lord 79 take a sheet of paper, fold it in half, and on one side write all the terms associated with geo bonds, and on the other, all the terms associated with revenue bonds. Because a lot of those questions are uh, distinguishing between geos and revenues, like all the following are true of geos except, or all following to revenues except. So uh, that's one way you can do that. So just go to your your study materials and, uh, you know, put the paper in half and then just go through and write all that. Like Ad Valerian would go on the GO side, user fee on the revenue side, feasibility study on the revenue side, debt service coverage ratio on the revenue side, flow of funds on the revenue side, coterminous GO side. So that's one thing I would recommend. Okay, it's coming up time for the drawing. It's coming up time for the drawing. So let me put that up there. Well, it's just tough. Uh, Kelly, Brian has a nice little cheat sheet where when I'm tutoring people, I tell them to put their name in the box and then we just go through it. And so, uh, you know, it's a memory work or you can also just uh, memorize it by doing the practice questions. Uh, There's no circumstance in which you're not going to be an agent of a broker dealer and whether you and the broker dealer register in a particular state would be the difference. And an investment advisor rep would really be dependent on are you for a state covered investment advisor or federally covered. So, uh, Kelly, I would recommend the quick sheets. Kaplan has the quick sheets with my guru disc- discount code. You can get that for, I think, about $17. They're nice laminated. Here, I'll just show you what it looks like. So this is the one for the 24, for example. And so I would highly recommend this. Whoop, let me see. Can I get it there? There you go. So you would get the one that says, oh, I'm, we got my camera backwards, I think. Well, um, there we go. So we have that for the... Uh, the NAS exams, all the exams. I think it's pretty cool. It has, you know, little things like that. So maybe you want to consider that as well. 72, yeah, that's tough. I told you that's a tough one. 
They're being tested, Brianna. You are going to be tested on new things. You always should answer with current information. So you are being tested on current information. So 73, for example, not 72 and a half. So you should answer with current information. Okay, looks like it's time almost for the uh, uh, the drawing. Whoops, sorry. I, I don't know what that happened. Had a panic attack on a 63. Okay, I think that's a, uh, Carolyn, don't do that again. Okay, so uh, for the discount, let me get it up here for the drawing. Excuse me. Give me a minute here to figure this out because I'm running. Uh, come on. There we go. That's the wrong one. Okay, so the discount, uh, the thing, let me get this here. Uh, we're going to use Guru. So put Guru in the chat if you'd like to participate in the drawing. So we got one in there. Let me kill Zelda's. Let me go back and kill this. Okay, we got 14 entries. Uh, any more? 17 entries. Make 40, well, Zelda, let's do that next time. Next time we'll make a podcast. Just remind me, uh, Zelda, you are Print of Oil participants. I appreciate you uh, being here on Tuesday evening. So just uh, remind me Tuesday evening when we start, you were an early bird. So, uh, if you get here again early Tuesday, next Tuesday, just let me know and I'll, I'll set this thing up for it. It'll be podcast. Uh, 19 anymore? Now, if Erica does win, I want you to know I didn't. I can't control this thing. It's completely random. Okay, that's 20. We always have more people uh, in the, but I get it. So you don't have to participate, uh, but we usually have more people than I see entries. So, all right, I'm going to give you, I'm uh, getting ready to draw. So here we go. Damn, Eric, I just saw your name go by. Marcel, <laughs> my friend from New Orleans, aren't you done with your testing? Well, uh, he's, he, he has good chi, so he, uh, I think he's a winner no matter where he's at, whether it's a drawing or you know, <laughs> lottery. So you know the deal. You have my email. Send it to me. If you don't need it because you're done with your testing, you can, uh, like I say, assign it to whoever you'd like, but do send me an email so I can send you your uh, Zoom invite. Let me get rid of the, the sharing here. Boom. Okay, anything else in the chat? <laughs> Erica, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of you. I told you, so don't worry about it. You will be a winner one way or another. So if, even if I have to you know, do it uh, uh, as a scholarship, we'll figure out a way to get it done for you. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. <laughs> Erica, say, hand it over, hand it over. <laughs> Okay, anything else here before we uh, call it a night and I let you guys get done with your lives? Uh, I really appreciate your participation. Uh, Thursday, it's on mutual funds as the premiere, but there's a live chat during that premiere. So if you want to, if it doesn't have to be, it's about mutual funds, but if you, you want to talk or you want to chat, you're welcome to join me uh, on that as well. So uh, I'll be doing it at five o'clock. I'll be doing uh, Raphael's uh, coaching call and I'll probably post that immediately afterward, depending on how much work I have to do to, you know, clean it up and load it up. So, all right, everybody. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your test is a cinch. Yard by yard, your test is hard. And I will see everybody next Tuesday, if not sooner. Bye-bye.